yeah, for us it's kind of like a, a dream situation because we're you know hanging out with our friends that we've known for so long. We're you know discovering beer. We're owning a business. We have like active ownership in the things that we're doing, which is like a great feeling yeah. and to do it with and your learning friends. Learning tremendously, also like we all knew a little bit about craft beers, but there's it's a huge world that it's very cool. There's so many breweries I had no idea, like just within Quebec. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside. I'm your not so humble host, Carp, and today we are in. Point St. Charles, Quebec at Bodega, and joining me is Liz and Paul. Hey, how's nice it going? You, Good. Thank you very much for hosting us today. I appreciate uh, having us and talking about your wonderful beer store here. So, of course. Glad uh, to be here. Once again, thank you very much. And uh, what's, what's the beer story? What brought you two together to create Bodega as a brand? So I guess it actually goes back quite a few years. Um, maybe seven years ago, I was sort of brewing beer at home with my neighbor. And, not exactly uh, legal. Not well. I mean, you can brew your own beer at home, but <laughs> you shouldn't be selling it, yeah. which is what we were doing at sort of underground music venues around town. I'm from a music background, so obviously I knew a lot of the sort of scenes going around town, and a lot of these underground places were happy to have sort of home, home brews at uh -huh. their shows. And so there was actually a, a venue right around the corner, about a block and a half away from here, uh, called Bad Lunch at the time, and no longer exists, but they would have little shows in the house, and we would be selling our, our beer there. We called it Bad Dog Beers. Uh, my neighbor's dog was the label of the beer. And so Liz licenses music sometimes for her other job, and she happened to have licensed the band that was playing that night, so we ended up meeting just a block and a half away from here because I was selling beer, and now, you know, about seven years later, we're engaged, we have a house together, we have a business together about beer, which is kind of <laughs> ironic. And, uh, but we, we had never thought of really doing this. It's actually one of our other partners who's not here, who you know had this in mind for a while, and then the pandemic made it so that we all had a lot of free time on our hands. And a year later, this was a store. Yeah, it's wild like how much kind of the pandemic helped some people. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we've uh, interviewed Third Moon out of uh, Milton, Ontario, and they were like, it actually helped us because we got to delay. We didn't have to rush to their opening date. So it's, you know, it's pandemic sucked on all levels. Yeah, but for sure. It helps some people, which is great. It was yeah. definitely like a catalyst for us, and especially with uh, like Paul being in the music scene, like that kind of came to a halt really quickly, and it was just a good opportunity to take our time and, and use it to do something new. And your other partner, uh, mentioning them, it's, you, I guess you threw your friend, well, obviously you two are engaged, but that's a friend of yours. And yeah. Just, yeah, so we're actually five friends okay. that uh, we've known each other over a decade, at least all of us. So yeah, it's really a cool, very tight team that we all know each other very well. So we were hesitant a little bit because we thought like, you know, this could maybe be detrimental to our friendships. <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. of people told yeah. us like, oh, that's too many people for a business. Five people is too many. But honestly, it's been pretty smooth. Pretty yeah. smooth. We've everyone had our road brings, bumps for sure. Everyone really like brings something different to the table too. We have someone who does like the buying, someone who does the marketing. We all like bring in different expertise from our our regular lives. Yeah, uh, I've interviewed a territory manager for a brewery in Ontario, and he's like, yeah, I'm good at selling beer, but science is hard, I don't know how to brew beer. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and all those people are important. You need your person who specializes in SEOs and social media, and so, uh, especially nowadays with social media, you just gotta keep going like that. So it's, uh, it's a good thing that you seem quite a great team from the sound of it. Obviously, you've been open six months at this point. Yeah, we just- Not uh, even, we opened on October 26th. Yeah past our four month anniversary. So we're, we're super happy with the way it's going and we're looking forward to the summer. It's gonna be awesome. Definitely. I'm sure those team meetings are real hard. Oh, let's just grab a beer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's dangerous sometimes. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's but no slope. complaints, no complaints. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And, and you do have the tasting flight. You did mention earlier that uh, before the show you do tasting flights, which is great because not a lot of places have that unless they have the brewery themselves come in as you know, let's say Jean from uh, Matera, for example, comes in and he's like, no, we'll taste my beers here. And then you still do their business where it seems like you do both at the same time and you host yourself, which is great. It's very different. 
Yeah, for sure. We're definitely looking to do more and more tastings, uh, exactly. both on our own and in partnership with the breweries and kind of diversify that and offer also our customer and the community a place to go, discover some different beers. Yeah. Now, uh, obviously outside the pandemic, what were some other like roadblocks, difficulties of, of creating Bodega, location, you know, obviously there's three in Point St. Charles now, there's three beer stores, sure. which at one point there was just your local depaneur. Yeah, and definitely. Now it's three beer specialty stores. I mean, I would say that definitely one of the big challenges was that it was all of our first times opening a business. So, you know, I think a little uh, naively, we're like, oh, this is going to be easy, you know, like I've done business things before, no problem. So it was just a little bit of a shock for us when it was super challenging. Finding the location was super challenging as well. Uh, we spent a lot of time in like lease negotiation. We wanted to make sure that we found something that's um, close to a gathering point where people are like getting together and drinking and picnicking. Um, so obviously the Lachine Canal was a main target for us. Um, and at the time that we signed our lease and started developing, there wasn't three this beer stores. There was only one in Point St. Charles. So that was a nice surprise for us too. But we're super happy because it just means the point is like becoming this destination for beer. We're super happy to be a part of it, honestly. Yeah, it's crazy how much, like, uh, I'm in Verdun, and, and just ever since Benelux came in, it's new restaurant, new this, yeah. new that. It's, I'm like, you know, gentrification kind of sucks because prices go up, but at the same time, it's like, oh, for my fancy beer palette, <laughs> it's yeah. better for yeah. me. So. Well, because in the whole Southwest, there was pretty much only Malte Ups, which is a great spot, and they're, like, well integrated now. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it's cool to have more players coming around and... It's a, it's a destination for people who like craft beers. You can just sort of almost do a mm -hmm. beer hopping situation just in the point. Oh, I mean, you just start at Four Origins and then purchase beer on the way home. Exactly. It's simple. Perfect, yeah. 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 Plus, you got the softball field down the street, which uh, I personally would play there, you know, every once in a while. And now that I don't have to go to the Depener and drink the macro beer, I could come here or your friends down the street for uh, cold beer, beer for cold beer. Uh, or cheers, you know, there's, I got three options. And then even on my way here, as you mentioned, Malte Hops, it's, it's nice to, to see more places that, that offer a variety of, of things. And, and you yourselves, you do have a, an awards program, which I noticed yeah. when I came in last time. So what, what made you decide to, to have a rewards program? I think for us, it's really about offering uh, convenience to our customers, a reason to come back, obviously, and then also being able to track the purchases that they make. Like we want, you know, sometimes for myself, I'll drink something and I'll be like, I really like that beer. What was it? I don't even remember what it was, you know? So just like that availability to be able to go online and be like, okay, this is what I bought. This is, I think this is the one that I liked and be able to identify your needs better. And also for us to be able to understand what our customer wants a little bit better and buy in consequence. Yeah. It's definitely like a community oriented type business, you know? So we see the same people a lot and we want to get to know our customers. <clears throat> so loyalty uh, program I mean, is useful. It's not for the customers, you guys don't go, right? You don't continue. So that's, Exactly. Exactly. I, I know, you know, people are like, well the customers always are I'm like personally from what I've seen, not all the time. But <laughs> it's uh, it is, you know, it is necessary that clientele, especially regulars, who oh that guy loves IPAs, but let's throw him something new this time. That's, that's great that you get to know your customers and, and clearly your, your system uh, helps that. So. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's really fun too because uh, like even though the customer is always right but not really, I mm -hmm. feel like craft beer customers are ready and willing to try new things and like they might not like something that they try but that's all part of the process of discovering what you like, you know? Exactly. It's a yeah. really unique customer segment. I see you have local hot sauces, uh, wines and ciders in the back. Uh, what kind of... Obviously, you need to diversify your portfolio of what people come in to have. What, what made you decide kind of have the arrangement that you do with here's these beers, here's those beers, here's hot sauce, here's chips, like the layout of the store, where did that come from? So we weren't exactly sure how we were going to organize our fridges at first. Um, Liz sort of designed the, the actual layout of the store, which I think turned out pretty nicely. People seem to feel like it's a hospitable space and that it's, you're able to move around easily. It's easy to shop, and we really wanted to kind of nod to like a classic Depener layout where, you know, the cash is in the front, and then you kind of go around and circle back. So that was a purposeful decision. And yeah, just making it really easy to shop was important, for sure. Yeah, so we weren't sure, because a lot of beer boutiques have their beers by brewery, right? But we thought it was maybe more convenient for people if they're by style, because people tend to know what sort of drink they want, and then they can 
explore in that area. And it seems to be working well. We, at first, we wanted to just try it and then maybe try by brewer, but we ended up just sticking with this because it seems to work well. And then for other food products, it's a lot of trial and error. We try to stay as local as possible, partner with other restaurants and stuff that are in the neighborhood. Uh, but, you know, some, some things sell, some things don't, and then get rid of it eventually and yeah. replace it with something else. Yeah, I think that for our food philosophy too, like it was really important for us to kind of be that one-stop shop for like picnics or like hang out on the canal and having a bite and what's like an easy food that you can grab on your way home, just like a convenience factor, but like elevated, like Paul said, with local vendors and things that people want to discover. Plus I am discovering, you know, uh, along center and there's more and more restaurants opening now too, mm -hmm. so Absolutely. it's pretty wild. And, and I never noticed a burger shop next to you before, so that's... So it's actually not a burger shop, which oh. is a confusing by the name. It's a Haitian restaurant. They serve like griot and whatnot. Okay. Really great stuff. You should oh, try cool. it. Very good with beer too. Yeah. Like that Absolutely. nice rich meat flavor, you know? It's yeah. the perfect so compliment. He sends clients over here quite a bit, and we try to send him people also. And the restaurant on the corner over here, Seplai, it's a new Laotian restaurant. There, bring your own wine, bring your own beer. So they send people here a lot too. So we, we try to get to know all the restaurants around and collaborate any way we can, you know. Montreal's a big island, but it's still a small community, small community, small community. Yeah. So you obviously need to work together. And if anything, this pandemic should have brought us closer together. I, I do find with some businesses it has, which is great. It's that we, we need to support local. We need to keep local businesses going. And I've been a big proponent of supporting local ever before the pandemic started, it's like, well, no, just don't buy macro, buy these guys. You know, there's four origins down the street, there's Santa Taverna up there, go, go grab a pizza there and then go drink a beer at Four Origins. It's, you know. And I think we see that, uh, especially in this community in Point St. Charles, people are really like hyper-local focused. Some of the beers that do the best for us are Santa Taverna and Catarigen, even though those breweries themselves are in yeah. the city, you know? Um, so people really appreciate that like hyper-local touch. Very cool. Uh, Bodega, why that? Why not, you know, Point St. Charles Beer Store or anything like that? So, yeah, the name uh, was like a journey. For me, that was like a really important part of the business because it has to, you know, have a meaning, be catchy. And we were like flip-flopping between a bunch of options. And I remember we were walking by the space with a buddy of ours from New York. Shout out to Clifford. <laughs> and uh, explaining to him what the business is. And he was like, oh, it's like a bodega. And I was like, yes, like a bodega. And I just, you know, kind of got my wheels in motion and wanted to like francophone version yeah. it because uh, we know that that's super important also in Montreal and for our, our community. Um, so we came up with bodega, which is, you know, kind of like a beautiful mess, um, mm -hmm. which was really the perfect name because it really encapsulates also just like our DIY, like scrappy spirit. And, you know, it's not perfect, but we're kind of like making it what it is. And we found that it's actually like the perfect name to describe Especially everything Especially for we the do. product that we sell also, you know, yeah. Like yeah. you have enough of it and you'll probably turn into a hot mess. <laughs> Make a few uh, diggas around town. We're never town, drinking you know. dry. So. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, a fun one to play around with and the people who get the little pun get it and those who don't, don't, and that's fine too. Awesome. Uh, so you, let's say you get a macro drinker come in, obviously, you do have the Regal down the street, which is heavily macro, and person walks by and he's like, hey, what's this craft beer stuff? And what do you, what do you recommend to that person? Uh, I mean, I'll probably try to start them on like a, an approachable Pilsner or something like that, just because that's what they're used to, but maybe something that's a little bit more elevated than a Molson, obviously. Um, we do have a few of those people come in and sometimes they, they won't buy anything because they're just looking for, you know, your popper's ice or yeah. <laughs> whatever that a, a normal dep would sell, even milk and eggs sometimes, you know, and we're like, well, sorry, we don't have that. So then they'll, they'll go on their way, but sometimes you manage to get them to try something and then they might come back because it clearly is a better product. So if they're able to afford it, then they'll come back. Yeah, I mean, everybody's fighting for fridge space, right? So it's, it's really your product has to speak for itself. The beer has to speak for itself. Absolutely. And stores like yours help people's journey into the craft beer world. They're uh, speaking with Jordan St. John out of Ontario, one of the main Ontario beer writers. He's like, it's slow, but it is shifting. 
Totally, and that's why we wanted to make it really accessible with like the way that we're merchandising it and like even having descriptions up on the wall of like what are the main flavor profiles you can expect with each type of beer. Not everyone is like so comfortable asking for help. A lot of people when they shop are just kind of like they, they're, you know, a little shy and they just kind of want to figure it out on their own. Um, so we want to make sure that it becomes like super accessible and people can like go in and try something and not feel bad that they might not have all the knowledge right away, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I do, personally, my group of friends, I've, I've tried to convince as many of them to switch to craft beer as possible, and, and most of them have. It's, it's really the softball crowd still, where it's, you know, oh, we got to drink our macros. I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Like, you're not, you're supporting some, you know, publicly traded company when you could just be supporting guys down the street, you know, uh, playing softball in Point Claire. It's like, well, okay, there's La Brosse, and now there's Four Origins out there now, too. It's, it's important to support these guys more so than, than your macro owners. Absolutely, They're, absolutely. The macro places are always going to survive. You're always going to have your math beer drinkers. They're always going to control the stadiums. For sure. Just have one of these guys instead. Have a, have a local beer. Even Steam Whistle, like when you think about it, they're a pretty big company, especially now buying Bose. Uh, still, if Steam Whistle is a solid Pilsner. Yeah. Absolutely. Been absolutely. their beer for 20-something years. Yeah. You know. so that's well, that's why it's, our, it's pretty much our only six-pack that we hold, that we sell as a six-pack. So we wanted something that is, you know, slightly more affordable also, but that's still a really good independent product. Yeah. And what we were finding also is that a lot of those customers or, or even like our regular customers, you know, they want a couple craft beers, but then to finish off their night, you know, maybe they want to be a little bit more cost efficient. So, you know, they'll start off with like two craft and then they'll do like a six pack of steam, steam whistle and it kind of uh, works and for that. Know, the way I see it is steam whistle is... I mean, the, the brewery is beautiful in Toronto. It's been, unfortunately, a few years since I've been able to go, but uh, just they, they have that entire area kind of, this is Steam Whistle, so it's uh, pretty awesome. And I have hopes that the uh, buyout will work for both companies in the end. Uh, Hopefully, you know, yeah, because Bose makes good stuff also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we were discussing it in, in our group. It's, well, is it now going to be, you know, Bose Oktoberfest sponsored by Steam Whistle <laughs> or... Gets we're, a little messy. <laughs> yeah, we're we're still hoping that that one will come back too. Is is because October uh, Bose Oktoberfest is super fun. Yeah. So I, I like to ask this uh, for stores like yourselves. Any kind of funny or have you had it? Maybe because obviously up and coming neighborhood. Maybe a celebrity that swung by. Uh, anything like that. Honestly, even if there was, I don't know that I would recognize them. So that's kind of our problem with that. Like I have such bad recognizing skills for anyone who's like quote unquote famous. But I, I don't think anybody famous yeah. has come by, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so may, maybe local famous people that only like, definitely the community like knows. A couple influencers and stuff like mm. that, but nothing. Uh, yeah. Some politicians that are trying to get votes. <laughs> um, any funny stories though? Any kind of weird stuff hmm funny stories i mean regular funny stuff i guess nothing too uh remarkable like okay. we definitely get some uh point saint charles characters that come in from now and again you yeah. know to the point where is it like a little frustrating or no i mean they, they're usually just curious like what is this you know they might not know about craft beer and they just kind of have some questions and you know usually we'll walk out without making a purchase, but it's, it's nice. I think they, they like to see what are the businesses that are popping up, and even if it's not their vibe or they're not going to go for it, I think they're happy to see that there's new business coming into the point and that, you know, we're not like a snotty business. We're just uh, here selling beer. Yeah, you're not turning your nose up and you're like, oh, you don't drink craft. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, no, it's, you know, uh, craft beer is diverse, and, and clearly that's, that's what we're about is diversity in the business. Uh, and you hope you being five partners is crazy because I'm sure there's quite the diverse background you're bringing into the store. So definitely. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. And, and it, to me, you know, it's, we're constantly like LGBTQ, BIPOC, that there needs to be more of this in the brewing industry because it can't just be dudes who look like me the entire time who own everything. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're always uh, looking to diversify too. Like we're hiring now. Uh, that's a big milestone for us. And uh, yeah, we're excited to get even more part of the community. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, starting somewhere here as a weekend job for an 18-year-old student, that's, they don't have to know much. It's just like, well, so the beer kind of sells itself most of the time. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, we try to have, we want our staff to be knowledgeable enough, so, you know, we'll give them proper training and everything, but uh, 
to your yeah. point, it's a lot about discovery. So as long as you know pretty much the basics, you can guide people. No, it was the same way when I find used to work at EB Games back in the day. It's like, do you play video games? I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't be here otherwise. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, us, exactly. it's kind of like a, a dream situation because we're, you know, hanging out with our friends that we've known for so long. We're, you know, discovering beer. We're owning a business. We have like active ownership in the things that we're doing, which is like a great feeling yeah. and to do it and with and your learning friends. learning tremendously also. Like we all knew a little bit about craft beers, but there's, it's a huge world that very cool. There's so many breweries I had no idea, like just within Quebec. Oh yeah. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, I think 300 and something, it's, it's really up there it's in crazy. Ontario. Oh my god. Yes. It's, I, you can't throw a rock without hitting a brewery in Ontario at this point. Yeah. So if uh, the beer borders were to open and you could get beers, now I do see Two Crows, which is obviously out of Halifax. Uh, well, not obviously, for those who don't know, it's out of Halifax. Uh, but if the beer borders do open, could you see yourselves having more beers from Ontario, Alberta, BC? I think so. Potentially, potentially. Like right now, we only have Collective Arts out of Toronto and, and uh, Two Crows out of Halifax. But yeah, it could be interesting if, if that is a possibility. Like we try to stay as local as possible mm -hmm. and we feel like there is enough local options that we wouldn't necessarily have to do that. But, uh, you know, we're always open to, to trying out new I, things. You know? I definitely think we would consider bringing in some people from around Canada, some different breweries from around Canada, but I don't think we would do like imports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now that, that's, a, you know, the, the beer laws in Canada are, as a craft beer drinker are so incredibly frustrating. So frustrating. Well, yeah, for wine as well, you yeah. know, it would be great to bring in some great, you know, BC wines and, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. No, there's just so much good across Canada and, you know, I'm going to support Quebec first because I live here, but I do enjoy drinking beer from other provinces. There's Absolutely. There's no question about it. So. Yeah. And even when it's a little less complicated to travel to the U.S. back to Vermont and things like that, so. Totally. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of traveling, you know, obviously you're both very busy having other jobs and this, but when there's, let's say, time, uh, a beercation that you'd love to take, you know, even if it's just Vermont for a long weekend or off to Germany for a real Oktoberfest, what's, what's kind of that beercation you'd love to take? I mean, Vermont does look incredible, and I don't think either of us have ever been, so that would be very cool. But uh, I have lots of family in Germany too, so that would obviously be a fun place to go. I've been before and the beer is incredible, obviously. So, yeah. Yeah, I would think I would like to do even just like a Canada beer tour and just to discover a little bit more about the craft scene in other provinces. And like we, we had been to and, yeah. Seattle before and they have an incredible craft beer scene. Yeah. Also, like literally neighborhoods that are just a bunch of brewers. Mm -hmm. So that was very, very fun. Which is kind of our reference for what we think Point St. Charles is becoming. Yeah. No, that's, that's been my hope for a while is that each borough gets a beer store. Like I know there's Verdun, I'm lucky enough to get multi hops, but LaSalle, the neighborhood over where I have friends live, there's no beer store. Yeah. yeah. It's, to me, there's more than enough room for everybody to, to succeed. And, and okay. Absolutely. And obviously, you having a, re a rewards program, same with Cheers, is, is maybe people will be a little more drawn to you because, oh, I get a discount, these people know my flavor profile and things like that. So it's a uh, friendly competition the way I look at it. Yeah, and it's also a convenience business, you know? At the end of the day, you're probably gonna go to the business that's closest to where you are. Collaborations have, now obviously you mentioned the restaurants, but could you see yourselves collabing and make, because you mentioned you were a home brewer, collabing and making a beer with Four Origins maybe, or something? So we right? actually are uh, collabing with um, La Brasserie des Paris from Yamashish, and uh, so they're gonna be making our in-house beer, which hopefully should be here in about a month. So that's very, very exciting. Oh, I look forward to that. I, I can't wait to, to see that and come and taste one for sure. Yeah. Like we uh, had considered Catarigen, but they do a lot of the local stuff like yeah. McKiernan and Joe Beef and Sate Brothers. So we figured, well, let's maybe look somewhere else. And but it's super interesting to see how like that collab scene in beer is like really taking off in restaurants, making in-house brews with like local breweries. That's great. And those are beers that sell really well for us when we have access to them, actually. Yeah. Anybody else you'd like to see yourselves working with, whether it be uh, either a, another restaurant or another brewery, any, anything like that? Uh, I mean, we're definitely open to many possibilities, like we're, we're really new, so there's a million ideas and only so much time, so <laughs> it's really, uh, you know, what, what opportunities come first and stuff like that, so it, yeah. it's a lot of learning along the way and we'll, we'll see what comes our way. But 
super impressive to see like what Cheers has achieved in the past couple of years since their opening and they've like really expanded and you know they have their own beers and their own brewery and mm -hmm. like that's super impressive. So yeah, you mentioned you do home brew. What was that first home brew and what made you decide, you know, I'm going to I'm going to be a home brewer to start and uh, do you still do it? So to answer the second question first, I don't brew anymore. It's been probably 5 or 6 years. Uh, I was brewing with my neighbor at the time who had learned from some buddies of his, so it was very interesting for us to, to learn that sort of together, and it was a great hobby and pastime. And we saved a lot of money too, and it was cool to like try out our, our own stuff. Some were hits, a lot were misses, of course. I don't necessarily remember what's the first beer we ever brewed, mm -hmm. but I would say most likely an IPA. Yeah, so I think now, like, to have so many good beers at my disposal. I don't know if I need to spend my time doing that, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to it at all just because it's a fun activity and uh, I would love to get back into it for sure once we well, have more time on our hands. I mean, some of the systems now, the green fathers and, and things like that, it's just, it's almost like a push button system. You just got to make sure your hops and stuff go in, in time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've interviewed a home brewer, this guy, Dan, and, and his setup is something, you know, mind blowing. So it's, uh, we're, we're a fan of, of obviously, because we get to hang out with Dan and drink his beer, it's, yet again, when you think about it, it's supporting local, although we don't have to pay for it. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see if we can find the space in our basement to do a brew setup. <laughs> yeah. What's next for Bodega? Uh, we're definitely looking to gear towards the summer. As I mentioned, the canal being right here, we're like nestled between the metro and the canal, so we really think that's going to be an exciting time for us. Um, bringing on some more tastings, maybe on a monthly or every two weeks. maybe. Yeah, every two weeks. Um, and really just like expanding our products. We want to bring in new stuff, exclusive stuff. We want to discover more and really uh, solidify that and become a destination for all things beer and food. Maybe yeah, like I, I see the food fridge in the back. So it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty much a one-stop shop for somebody like me who wants to support a local business. You know, I could grab food down the street and grab beer and then head home. So. There you go. Yeah, we're really looking to be like a community spot where people can like hang out to have potentially some live music in the mm. summer. So that's something we're looking forward to. Yeah. Like the restaurant next door, the Haitian restaurant, is probably going to have a terrace. So we're hoping to have some sort of uh, collaboration with him and then maybe have like musicians play the saint Gassettes on weekends and uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Maybe a rental service for coolers on the canal and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, a lot of possibilities, and we'll we'll see what we're able to get done in this first year. You know, uh, I do know there's a Sunday softball league, so you just got to yeah. draw absolutely them from yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know a bunch of the players there, so it's uh it's it's fun going there and, and just you know I'm watching everybody drinking macro beers and I'm just like I'll oh, drink my fancy lager, <laughs> <laughs> pour it in a glass. People are like, what are you doing? I'm like. I like my fancy beer. Totally. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be one of our challenges. Yes. We're going we're gonna to capture them, you know? I think we'll be able to do At it. least a few of them, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Do you see yourselves doing a delivery service, maybe? I know Cheers Up the Street does, but not many craft uh, beer stores do. Could you see yourself kind of We actually that just, just launched uh, on Uber Eats just yesterday, pretty much. Uh, so we're trying that out. And eventually, probably within the next month, we want to launch from our own website as well to avoid the Uber fees, of yes. course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a work in progress, so very soon we will be doing that. But we definitely re recognize that like, that convenience is super important and that's exactly. something that customers want and expect. Yeah. yeah, I know when the pandemic first started, it's unfortunately Quebec, we can't, the breweries can't deliver beer where the, I know Ontario and BC does. I'm not sure about the rest of Canada. And it's just, why couldn't we in Quebec? This, these are businesses that need to survive. They need to get their beers out. I don't want to wait outside two meters away from somebody to get inside and, and then I'm delaying somebody else when I could just do 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 do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. Totally. Yeah. We even want to potentially have like a delivery service on the canal, maybe like a bike person. So a lot yeah, of possibilities. Cool. Yeah. I'd like that. I'd personally love something like that, but I'm, I'm all about innovation and stuff like that. It, could work for the softball at least. Yeah, too. definitely. The easier for beer to get to me <laughs> and me not having to move is even better. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. It's been a fantastic talk. I have no other questions. I really appreciate you both uh, speaking with me today about your business. I, Ooh, I look so forward, much. completely look forward to your future here and, and wherever else you may go, should you expand to the point where you open another store or a brewery or anything. I'm, I'm a fan. You've got a fan in me and, and hopefully our viewership too. So that's Thanks great. So
Uh, let everybody know where they can find you. Well, you can find us at 1239 Charlevoix in Point St. Charles. Um, as mentioned, we're right next to the Charlevoix Metro and close to the canal as well. Uh, you could also find us online at bodega.ca on Instagram, on TikTok, all those fun places. Awesome. We're going to add all that in the show notes, so just click on the links below. As for us, allbeerinside.com is the website, at allbeerinside on all social media, and as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not craft.